Hey folks, David here, TexasHornsFans.com. Is B. Sean Robinson overrated? I know I might catch some uh, catch some hell for this title, but um, stick with me here. We've got uh, five reasons why really Texas fans might be overrating uh, B. Sean Robinson uh, heading into 2021 season. Understandably so, but um, thought would thought I'd do kind of a little video, kind of going against the grain here. So um, hope you enjoy it. Definitely don't forget to give it a like, share it out subscribe hit the notification bell leave your comments below uh, if you're watching the video if you're just listening to this on the podcast also definitely don't forget to subscribe but uh, i love hearing from you let me know your thoughts on this um, so hope you enjoy the video All right, so I'm going to count down from like my kind of five reasons. So I'm going to start with number five. Uh, number five is really just kind of kind of what I alluded to in the intro. Um, if B. John Robinson is overrated, it's our fault, right? Um, that really means that uh, it's Texas fans that are overrating B. John Robinson. Um, I definitely don't, don't think that he's overrating himself or that his teammates are. Um, if you follow Bijan on uh, like Instagram or listen listen to him in any of the interviews he does, even going back to high school, he's a really humble kid. Um, you know, he obviously has got a great head on his shoulders. He's exactly the type of player that I think you would want a leader to be representing the program. So, you know, just in terms of why Texas fans just might need to calm down just a bit on him. Um, I definitely don't blame Bijan for, for um, overrating himself. If he's overrated, um, it's our fault. It's because Texas fans might be just expecting a little bit too much out of him, especially going into a season with so many changes, you know, new quarterback, stuff like that. So number four is pretty obvious, a completely brand new coaching staff. Now, on the flip side of that, you might say, well, that's exactly what's needed, you know, for, for, for Bijan to be able to actually go out there and, and do what he can do. And I totally see that. But also consider the fact that it is a new coaching staff. It's, it's building new relationships. It's building trust. It's the players trying to figure out what the coaches want out of them, what they expect of them, the co you know the the schemes and the offense, the ideas, the playbooks, and also uh, you know flip that around. It's the coaches building uh, trust with the players, figuring out where their strengths and weaknesses are, how they work together, what they can and can't get out of some of these guys, what they you know can expect. So there's a lot of dynamics there um, to factor in. Uh, where Bijan was recruited by a completely different coaching staff, um, and now they come in with, you know, we're not really quite sure what we have at quarterback, um, you know, coming off of a disappointing year, but with Sam Ellinger being the focal point of the offense for the past four years, really, that's now gone. So there's just, you know, a ton of changes, a lot of, just a lot of uncertainties there with the coaching staff and those relationships. So, you know, we... we Got a glimpse of it in the spring game. You know, he, he looked great, but, you know, still, there, there's there, there's just still a lot of unknowns heading into to 2021. All right, number three is, I would say you look back at Bijan's freshman year, you know, just through the whole season. Um, I really think one of the goals that I'd like to see is he's got to get in, into the end zone more. And, yeah, a lot of that probably wasn't his fault. A lot of that was the offense, the the crazy personnel decisions at times, and then just the fact that it seemed like no matter who Texas was playing, they were like right there um, to the wire in, in the fourth quarter. It's not like they were using the running backs to just pound it down the other team's throat to put the game away, right, and then maybe getting into the end zone. Um, he didn't score his first touchdown until the Kansas State game. So, you know, and, and again, maybe that was some of that was him as a freshman uh, getting used to the tempo, getting used to the timing of the offensive line blocking the coaches, you know, trusting him in certain situations. But also, you know, it was uh, it was still kind of a pass first offense. And with Steve Sarkeesian coming in, I, w I wouldn't expect 
to be a completely run first offense, but I also obviously wouldn't be surprised if Bijan did end up being the main focal point of the offensive attack. But I would still like to see him get get into the end zone early and a lot more often uh, than he did last year for certain. Uh, number two is just looking at the fact that while he while his total production last year was pretty impressive, um, a huge chunk of his overall uh, yards, especially rushing yards, came against uh, Kansas State and against Colorado in the Alamo Bowl, the, the last two games. In fact, he had 355 rushing yards in those two games combined, which are about a, a little bit over half of his entire uh, rushing yards uh, for the season. If you take away those 355 yards, his uh, his yards per carry from, what was it, 8.2 uh, per carry goes down to 5.2 yards per carry if you take out the Kansas State and the, the Colorado game. Now, 5.2 yards per carry is still pretty darn good, but... In college, I think you'd like to see a dynamic running back, you know, average somewhere between uh, those two measures, 5.2 to, to 8.2. If he was averaging, you know, 6.5 or more, I think that would be great. But just to kind of consider that a hu- uh, half of his uh, of his rushing yards uh, came in those two games, and he didn't even score a touchdown until Kansas State. Now. You could also say that, hey, you know, he that's kind of when he was getting a stride. That's kind of when he was actually being used more like we think he should be used. Um, and even kind of in the Alamo Bowl, he kind of disappeared in the second quarter, if you remember. So, you know, you can kind of look at that both ways. You can say, wow, look how strong he finished the season, which is an indication, I think, of what he's going to of what he's going to do, um, you know, just just this fall and, and hit the ground running. So yeah, that might be true, um, but you can also kind of look at it as, you know, uh, hopefully we see more consistent production um, out of him this season, all right? And my number one reason why uh, Bijan might be overrated or why Texas fans might be overrating Bijan Robinson is really just questions um, on the offensive line. There's still some, you know, there, there's still a few issues there of, you know, the continuity of the line. Um, we lose the best offensive lineman in, in Sam Cosme, but we've got some young guys stepping up who look really good. Uh, Jake Majors looks like he's going to he's gonna be a dude um, at center. If Derek Kirksetter, who, who should be ready and, and healthy, I do think he'll end up, you know, taking over uh, uh a starting role there. Um, he's kind of proven to be pretty versatile, so I wouldn't be surprised if if Jake Majors um, sticks at center and Kirk Setter is one of the guards. I wouldn't even be surprised if Kirk Setter ends up being right tackle. Um, but then you know Christian Jones, um, even a young guy like Hayden Connor, um, Denzel Okafor, uh, Tyler Johnson. You know where do these guys fit in in terms of? Who can the coaches trust to run those blocking schemes to open things up for Bijan? It's got to start on the line, and I think Bijan would be the first one to tell you that. The line is where the game starts, so it has to it it there has to be trust with Bijan trusting the lineman, the lineman trusting that Bijan's going to hit the hole in time, that he's going to be there with his timing. That's that was really early on the thing that I saw that, that stood out to me um, early last season that I thought Bijan was lacking was just his timing hitting the hole and his timing uh, trusting the run blocking scheme, which is totally understandable. He's a freshman. They didn't have spring ball last year. They didn't have summer workouts last year. You know, they had a new offensive coordinator. All this stuff was different and new and, 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 and had to be, you know, put together. Um, so I think he got a lot better at that last year. Obviously, the kid has multiple moves. He's a tough runner. He has really good top-end speed, even though he doesn't look like he's running fast. He's moving. His body's moving pretty fast. So that's going to be interesting to see. But that, that's my number one concern is, 
is who's going to step up in the offensive line and be kind of that trustworthy, you know, leaders in, in, in unit that works together because more than any other unit, the offensive line has to work together almost as a miniature team. Uh, the center kind of has to be the quarterback of the line. They talk to each other a lot. Their blocking assignments could change within a second, depending on blitzes and shifts and stunts and stuff like that. So that's going to be, that's my number one. But having said all that, yeah, I'm expecting more out of Bijan than, than what we saw last year. I'm really happy that Roshan Johnson is still there backing him up. But, you know, in the West Virginia game, when when, when Bijan showed, you know, a spin move, uh, a juke, a stiff arm, he, he has way more in his bag than what we've seen uh, in, in Texas in a long time. And he's also just... A, a, a good kid you know you can just you can just tell like like the just in how he carries himself um you know he he just seems to be a humble smart leader um really um which is which is awesome to see so i'm super excited i know you are too what could drop your comments below what concerns um maybe do you have about about Bijan? maybe it's just how the coaches are going to use him um, you know, and, and also as a as a as a receiver, um, he's shown that he can catch the ball and, and that he can get going downfield. Um, that's one thing I, I really like about him is that is that you know if he catches the ball in the open field, he's he's moving downfield. Even though he does have a lot of moves, his moves don't waste yards. They don't waste time. You know, sometimes you see these running backs trying to make moves. And all it really does is give defenders more time to zone, you know, to, to hone in on them. So, you know, that'll be interesting to see how he has grown and, and, and learned and, and built on his skill set. But super excited about him. I definitely think he should be the focal point of the offense. Um, again, let me know what you think below. And again, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you're on the podcast. Definitely subscribe. Um, and then contact me at texashornsfans.com. Also in let me know what else you want to talk about. Um, I'd love to get uh, some of you guys on here uh, to chat. That'd be fun. But TexasHornsFans.com, and we'll see you on the next video. Appreciate it. Welcome.